in uh, October, I think the 22nd, we do have some footage of, um, of October in 1955. My third record, I don't have been recording since March, but uh, my third record uh, at my front door, or crazy little mama come knocking, knocking at my front door, 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 was becoming a big hit following Ain't That a Shame. Bill Randall, the nation's number one DJ in Cleveland, brought me in from New York to headline a sock hop, about 3,000 kids in a high school in Cleveland. And when he picked me up at the airport, he said that we're bringing a kid up from Shreveport, Louisiana to be on tonight, too. Uh, he's appearing at the, uh, the Louisiana Hayride. And I said, who is he? He said, Elvis Presley. I said, Elvis Presley, I've seen his I heard his record on a jukebox in Dallas. He's a hillbilly, Bill. You think he's gonna go over here tonight? He said, well, smile. He said, RCA Victor thinks he's got something, so we'll, we'll hear tonight, see him. So uh, he came backstage at the high school auditorium shortly before we both went on to lip sync records, and he went on first because he was absolutely unknown to the Cleveland <coughs> kids. And uh, his collar was turned up and his hair all greased and long and, and his pants too long. And he had on some scuffed up white bucks too. And uh, I said, hi Elvis, I'm Pat Boone. Nice to meet you. I said, uh, Bill Randall thinks uh, that you may have some big things ahead for you. I don't know about that, I, I hope so. And uh, he, he, he was clearly shy or nervous. So he backed against the wall and his little entourage closed in and I quit trying to talk to him. Well, he went on, and the kids didn't know what to make of him at first because he sang Blue Moon of Kentucky, which is a real flat and scrugs kind of song. <laughs> and that was not in. But then uh, he said, thank you very much. I'd like, I'd like to do the other side of that record for you now. It's, I hope you like it. And he did, that's all right, mama. That's all right with me. And that got the kids. And of course, he was good looking. He looked like a greaser, which was not in yet. The kids from the wrong side of the tracks that. They're not on the sports teams. They're not into school activities. They have cigarettes rolled up in their T-shirt sleeves, and they laugh at the kids that are playing it straight. And, of course, they like the bad boys, and the girls are not supposed to associate with them, but they're fascinated by them. Anyway, that's what he looked like. And uh, later, when we were both renting houses in Bel Air and visiting back and forth, I said, that first night, Elvis, you seemed so shy. Well, I didn't know how to talk to you, man. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you were a star. I said, a star? I've only been recording since March. Yeah, but you were on the charts. <laughs> well, he got over that shyness very quickly. That night, I did get the screams and the, you know, the pandemonium when I went on, because I had three hit records. But I was smart enough never to follow Elvis again. <laughs>